Good morning. The Bitcoin, the virtual currency, broke down last week. Um, for, there were two reasons and two developments as actually leading to that um, correction. On Thursday, it was down by 22% at one time. Um, the first reason was that China, the government there, investigates and wants to um, strengthen the capital controls towards the Bitcoin. On Friday, they said that they want to um, go directly um, and look into how much money is being brought from China, from the more or less capital controlled China, into the international virtual internet based Bitcoin. And that is something that the government in Beijing does not like because it wants to um, minimize the capital outflows. And there are a lot of capital outflows right now. And so the Bitcoin is one, um, one way the, all the money might be going. And that is something that the Chinese government wants to stop. The next one, the next and the second development leading to the breakdown of the Bitcoin is Mexico. The Mexican government also wants to um, activate capital controls to stem the money outflow from the Mexican peso, which closed at an all time low past week uh, in the last week. And uh, yeah, that is something that both the weak renminbi capital outflows from China and capital outflows from Mexico both profited and both went towards the Bitcoin. And that was the reason why the Bitcoin went up so sharply. It has almost reached the price of one ounce of gold, but it didn't. And so it broke down back again. But the trend, you know, is all is still up. Um, and in every bull market, if there is a vertical uptrend and if there are sh uh, steep rises in the prices, there will be from now and then there will be a bull market correction and bull market corrections are very powerful and have been in a very short time. And if you look at the Bitcoin, it rose and rose and rose. And then we've got that correction last week where it went down strongly in a short time, powerful corrections. So that is still something that does not really necessarily um, turn the trend. The Dow Jones closed at 19 1999. That is the largest uh, valuation based on the earnings before interest, depreciation and appreciation since 1999. So that is a comparison that you have to do <laughs> with that closing price just shy of the 20,000 point mark. The earnings per uh, share to the price um, of the S&P 500. So the price earnings ratio of the S&P 500 is at 17, 1, 7, 17. The average is at 14. So right now we've got a uh, relative uh, strong labor market. On Friday we had the um, NFP data, which was just shy, shy of the expectations, just a bit weaker than expected. But the ISM industrial uh, the Institute of Supply Managers new orders component of that indicator, which is very important for the industrial ac um, activity in the United States, has been going up strongly. It's above 60 now. So that um, is uh, signaling that the industry and the industrial activity in the United States is going to expand in the coming months. So that is something that the Fed, um, one president of the Federal Reserve, has asked Washington to cl look closely into uh, with regards to any fiscal programs that Washington might do or Trump uh, might activate in regards to a possible overheating of the United States economy. So that is something that might um, trigger inflation that might trigger that um, the Fed in the end needs to stem that overheating of the economy by raising rates very fast this uh, next year, should there be a stronger inflation. So that is for now the market update. Watch the Dow Jones. Does it, after so many attempts, finally try or manage to close above 20,000 points? That is something that is closely watched. It's a psychological resistance. It's a resistance now in the charts. 
And it's a somehow um, psychological resistance because we are at such high valuations levels. Now, the next weeks, there will be the earnings season for the fourth quarter that will be coming out. And so we'll be, it will be very important to see that earnings are going up to justify just that high valuations.